Hi, I'm Gareth Evans. I'm a retired physics teacher, a pastor, a missionary, and itinerant for many years, traveling and speaking at youth conferences and pastors conferences in many parts of the world. As I look back over my long life, I see so many stepping stones where God placed before me to direct me into walking into his will. I never saw them ahead of me, but I see many, many of them as I look back. And I'd like to share some of those stepping stones with you. Join me on this journey as I tell some of my stories. God bless you. I've been a Christian about a year. When I was at our school, Cowbridge Grammar School, watching a cricket game against a visiting school from Swansea. They were batting at this moment and uh, a young man from the Swansea team came over to me. And he said, is that an Elim badge you have, an Elim Crusader badge? The Elim Crusaders were the young people's group that I belonged to in the Elim church I attended. I said, yes. He said, are you a Christian? I said, yes, you go to Elim. He said, I go to Elim Swansea. He said, come on, let's walk around the field. Let's talk. So with my new friend, I walked around the cricket field. We got to the other end of the field and the gate to the field and there's Mr. Sid Harris, my Latin teacher, is walking through the gate. And of course he knows me, I'm his worst student and he knows my companion because he plays for cricket for Wales and Mr. Harris was a selector for the Welsh school boys. He looked at us and he said, hello Don, hello Gareth, are you two brothers? You realise we have the same surname. Name Evans. Now, a ridiculous question because we couldn't be brothers. We lived 30 miles apart, maybe cousins. But the question he said, are you brothers? And Don, though batting an eyelid, said, yes, sir, brothers in the Lord. And I <laughs> gulped. <laughs> I'd never heard anybody so bold in witness. Little sideline to this. Many, many, many years later, I'm in Cardiff speaking at a Presbyterian church. And the man I'm there greeted me as well from a religion. I said, Calvary. So he said, oh, did you know Sid Harris? I said, yes, very well. He's my Latin teacher. Oh, he said, Sid just passed away a couple of months ago. He's one of our chief elders here in this evangelical church. I wonder whether Don's testimony had anything to do with Mr. Harris becoming a Christian later. I have no idea. Anyway, back to my story. I enjoyed that day with Don very, very much. And at the end of the day, he and I said farewell. And he went off. A year later, I'm doing my A-level, advanced level exams in pure maths, applied maths and physics. The system then in Britain was that you could apply to any university and they would accept you subject to you passing your A-level exams at a certain level. For example, two B's and a C or three C's or different universities had different requirements. My number one choice of a university was Birmingham. I wanted to go there. It was the best university in Britain at the time for mathematics. My second choice was Cardiff in Wales. My third choice was Swansea. My fourth choice was Aberystwyth. Now, I talked all year about going to Birmingham, hoping I'd get enough grades to go there, my number one choice. When I passed my exams, I found that I had grades to go, sufficient to go to any one of my choices. They, I qualified on all four levels. And all I have to do now is to notify the university of my choice. But I'm hesitant about writing to Birmingham. There's some check in my spirit. It's, Birmingham's too industrial. It's the centre of England. I'm not so sure. And Cardiff, well, well, Cardiff's too near home. It's only 10 miles away. I think I'll go to Swansea. Now, it's hard to believe nowadays, but Swansea is only 30 miles from my home, but I'd never, ever been there. In those days, you didn't travel far. And so I wrote off to Swansea, and I said I accept a position there, and I'd be coming to the maths and physics departments the following September. Then I wrote a letter to the uh, pastor of the Elim Church saying that I was coming, and asking him if there would be any ladies in the church who had accommodation for a young man. Now, I was naive enough to think a pastor did those sort of things. I never heard from him. Then one day I got a shock, I got a letter from the Welsh Joint Education Board. It said, Mr Evans, we understand you're going to Swansea. We have your grant available for you. They had grants then for accommodation and for uh, schooling. Uh, you didn't have to pay to go to university, you just had to pass exams. And they said, uh, we can't give it to you until we know your accommodation address. They don't want me to have it to spend and live on the beach. And the deadline date is 10 days time. And my heart sank. There's no way my father could afford. I could not go unless I got my grant. So the following Saturday, I took an express coach to Swansea to try to find the church, to find Pastor Cole, the pastor. I got into a telephone kiosk in the middle of the city and 
you know the Elam church? I come out and I'm lost and there's two girls standing there and they see that I'm lost and they say, can we help you? I said, well, <clears throat> I'm looking for the Elam church. They said, well, it's up here around the corner. But why are you going there? There's nothing on Saturday afternoon. I said, well, I need to talk to Pastor. Oh, they said, Pastor Cole doesn't live in town. He lives out in, in Teakhawk, three or four miles away. You need to catch such and such a bus. You need to get over. They told me exactly how to get the pastor's home. Discovered later they were brethren girls, Christian girls, that God placed there. Got to know them well later when I was in Swansea. So I got to Pastor Cole's house and I knocked the door and he came. I told him where I was and he said, oh my goodness, I forgot all about it. I wrote down the names of eight women in our church that I would speak to, but I've not done so. I said, oh my goodness. I thought he'd just give me the address right there and then. And my heart just really sank. He said, come on, he said, let's get in the car. We'll go back in and we'll go and see these ladies. We're driving back into Swansea, past Singleton Park, which is where the university is. And he suddenly breaks and turns down this narrow lane alongside the park. He said, there's a woman who's got twin boys. One of them's going to university with you. And the other one's going to London to Bible college. Maybe she let you take the place of the one going to London. And I thought, oh, come on. What woman's going to let a stranger take the place of a twin? No way. He goes into the house and he comes back out and he says, well, she's not really interested, but she'd like to meet you anyway. Well, I'm not interested in meeting somebody. I, I'm interested in finding accommodation. But I'm always being quite polite, so I went into the house with him. And the lady said to me, <coughs> well, she said, of course, if you came here, we expected to come to a church with us. I said, of course, I want to go to the Elim church. And then she said, well, I'm going to have to ask the boys. Then Pastor Cole said, well, where are the boys, Mr. Evans? And he said, well, Russell has just gone down the university and Don has just gone up the road. I said, Don? Don Evans? Yes, she said, that's my son. I said, did he play cricket for Wales? Yes, she said. I said, I know Don Evans. And with that, the front door opened and Pastor Cole is in the hallway. He said, Don, is somebody else says he knows you. And Don comes in, he sees me, and his face lights up. He said, God, man, what are you doing here? And he comes up. He said, Mum, this is the boy I told you about in Cowbridge last year. He said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm coming to university. I'm looking for accommodation. Mummy, get up my room. And I was in. My four years in Swansea were wonderful years. Mary became a surrogate mother to me, and Aubrey, her husband, gave me some gems that built me up as a young Christian. And God led me to the one person in a city of 140,000 where he knew accommodation. I had planned for Birmingham. God had planned all along for me to go to Swansea and he knew exactly which house and he took me right to that house. Now if Pastor Cole had followed up on my letter, he'd have gone to one of the other eight ladies and I would have missed the house that God wanted me to. So God had even arranged for Pastor Cole to forget and he led me right to the house where he wanted me. Coincidence? I don't think so.